again, we have no idea about the long term because, as was already mentioned by Dr. Rich, we've only been in the pandemic for over, you know just over a year. And 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 uh, more to the point, we haven't even been using these, but we've been using these vaccines for much less than one year, right? So we have no idea about the long term safety. I was actually interviewed not long ago about this, and, and provided this information, um, and it's resulted actually in a very public smear campaign against me right now. Um, but uh, the science is there, and that's what I wanted to show people. So I'll, I'll, I'll make this very simple. Um, what, what happened? So what, the key thing, which people, which was, was not made publicly available, so this is, was has not been uh, seen by a lot of people in the public uh, through a, a legitimate uh, request through the uh, you know a Freedom of Information uh, Act, uh, a confidential report submitted by Pfizer was obtained from the Japanese regulatory agency. And so I just want to show people this is this is a real document. And, and I know that this is on your site. So if people want to actually see this, they can either look at trial site news, their website. Uh, also, um, some of us are members of the Canadian COVID Care Alliance, and it's on that website as well. But I don't know if you can see here, let's show you at the top. Okay, this is you can see it, the Japanese. And what I just want to show you here is this, this is data from their study that shows where their vaccine platform, right? So again, I said this, what these are, these messenger RNAs, they're coded in these sort of little fat bubbles. We call them lipid nanoparticles. And so they looked where these go in the body. So to not, until now, we were assuming that these were acting like traditional vaccines where they go in the shoulder muscle and they don't go anywhere else. However, what this data shows us, and hold the table, you know, people are free to take a screenshot of this if they want, but it is available on your site, right? If they want to take a screenshot, I just want to show there's the numbers. And what this table tells us is where these lipid nanoparticles are going after injection. And remarkably, uh, at most time points, uh, after um, more than three quarters of the dose is no longer present at the injection site in the shoulder. So you ask, you know, where is it going? Uh, well, it turns out that these are uh, traveling all throughout the body uh, into all kinds of tissues. So I'm just going to highlight one here. I just want to show if I can show to people this. So if you look here, for example, what I'm pointing at here, and people might not be able to see it, but is ovaries. And if you follow the numbers along, if you can do that, uh, what you'll see is they increase over time. So they start looking at 15 minutes and went up to 48 hours, and it continues to increase. So it's accumulating in the ovaries, for example. And if people look at this table, they'll see it accumulates elsewhere. So our concern is uh, that this raises, you know, a legitimate question. We're not saying, we're not saying, you know, and I'm not saying that this means there's going to be any damage to the ovaries, for example. Uh, what it does, though, is it tells us that if you're, if, if we're getting the spike protein, for example, expressed in these tissues, there is uh, logical, scientific reasons why that could potentially be harmful. And as a consequence, uh, you know, we feel this is the type of study that should have been done before these vaccines were rolled out. And when you're seeing that this vaccine is traveling to all kinds of tissues, and we know the spike protein can play a role in the pathogenesis or the disease caused by the virus itself. So the protein itself does have the potential to be damaging to the body.